All right, so this is the final video in the medicine cabinet tutorial series. And this video is gonna be a little bit different because it's gonna kind of be like a build video. Uh, we're gonna go into the shop and I'm gonna show you exactly how I took this SketchUp model and built it in real life. Now the cool thing about this project is I didn't actually print out plans to build it. I just used the SketchUp mobile app. So you'll see a little bit of that in the video and you'll also see how I actually screwed up uh, the model in how I designed the door. So we had to make some last minute changes so you'll see how I dealt with that. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. Now, if you followed this video series so far, you have a SketchUp model very similar to this uh, that has the medicine cabinet, has an exploded view, and then has a view of all of the parts and pieces. So the cool thing about how we set this up is we kind of optimized it using scenes. That way we could just view this model right on your phone so you wouldn't have to prepare you know, traditional construction documents or plans. And that's exactly what I did uh, to build this uh, medicine cabinet. So let's go ahead and jump right over to the shop and see this thing get built. The first thing I did when you know prepping this whole thing was figuring out what material I needed. And um, by having that view of the top down with all of the materials, I was able to kind of go through the materials that I already had, you know, just, just in my shed, um, and then figuring out what I needed to go and purchase um, from the lumber yard. And so then it's just a matter of you know, starting to cut out the the parts that I need. So the first thing I'm cutting out here are the two side pieces. So I'm just cutting those to length. And then once I have those cut to length, I need to cut out that dado, um, I think it's called a dado, groove, dado. You guys let me know in the comments uh, <laughs> whether I'm right on that one. So yeah, that kind of shows you the, the cutout and then I'm just using the table saw. Um, I don't really have a good router set up, so I'm just using the table saw to cut out that dado. Um, a rabbit, that's what it's called, a rabbit. And here you can see the rabbit capturing that back panel. So basically, we're doing this right here, and the back panel's sitting right inside of those grooves. All right, so now I'm just using the uh, Craig pocket hole jig to create pocket holes, um, which I used quite a bit for the box of the medicine cabinet. Um, I, I love using pocket holes. They're very strong. It's quick, it's easy. So it's pretty flexible in uh, the different applications that you can use pocket holes for. And so you can see the screws kind of just go right down into those pockets and that's gonna get fastened just like that. And that's actually the top piece right here. Uh, you'll notice how it's set back a little bit and that's because we have the top rail that's going to be installed um, in front of that. And so here's what we got so far. You'll notice the uh, bottom piece is back there as well. So you might notice here that I actually ended up making a little change. Um, so I'm just checking everything for to be square. You wanna make sure, you know, when you're clamping and fastening everything um, that, it's, that it's all going together nice and square. And really with pocket holes, um, it, it depends it's really more reliant on how square you've cut your boards because once those pocket holes um, tighten everything, it's going to basically rack, you know, however, however the, the cuts are. Um, so if your cuts are good, your box is gonna go together uh, pretty well. Now, you might notice that the uh, top and bottom piece is a little bit different 
um, in, in how I built it compared to uh, how it is in the SketchUp model. And so in what I ended up doing was modifying this piece so it was uh, set in as well. And the reason I did that is because I went back and forth with the hinge style um, and originally I think this was designed as a, as a full overlay so the door was basically going to completely be on top of the side pieces but I ended up uh, switching to an inset door style with just a very simple hinge. And to be honest, I did not go back to the model and make those changes and then go back to the workshop. You know, there's a lot of times where, you know, you're working with something and even though you've spent so much time thinking about it and planning for it, when you're there in the moment, you know, sometimes plans changed and you don't always have to go back to the model and make those changes and go back, um, especially when it's something that you're doing yourself. You know, if you're working on a much bigger project and you have, you know, multiple people, then it's important to document those changes. But sometimes you can just make changes on the fly and that's, that's totally fine. And then uh, just use the table saw to, um, to cut out the back panel and check the fit before uh, actually fastening it down. And so I'm just using some glue here and spreading that out with my finger. And then I pop the panel back in place and use a nail gun to fasten it uh, permanently in place. So that, um, so that's gonna really strengthen up the entire box, having that half inch MDF back panel um, that's gonna really keep it from racking. And then I cut out and installed the top rail and bottom panel um, and installed those. Now, and you might've noticed that one of the advantages of having this bottom uh, board is that it hides the pocket holes. So I actually had pocket holes in this bottom piece going into the side panel, but because this, um, this board here gets installed tight up against that, you end up hiding all of those pocket holes, which is really nice. Now to attach the shelves, I used another jig made by Craig, um, and it's, a, it's basically just a, a jig that allows you to drill shelf pin holes, and then you can use uh, these shelf pins to install the shelves at a number of different varying heights in the cabinet. So that worked out really well. I just had to use uh, a spacer here and there just to get the right offset that I was looking for. But so I just did it on one side and then just drilled on the other side and then I was able to cut the shelves to length and get those uh, popped in place. And so now we have the box with the shelves all installed. And the next step is sanding. So there's a lot of sanding involved. I wanted to do this before getting the crown molding in place. And you can see I've got the, the first piece installed. Now this piece came out amazing. I was so proud of this. Um, and that gun right there is a, a pin nailer, which I love that gun. It's very, um, it's so useful for really delicate uh, corners, like when you're when you're nailing miters together, because the pin is so small, like it does not split the wood at all. I love using that tool, and I was really proud of this corner. It came out so nice. Check this out. Look at how nice this corner came out. Um, it's going to be painted, so there's a lot of touch up, anyways, but. Um, so now I'm just marking the hinges. I ended up going with just like this really simple hinge um, and it just really simplified things. And that just involved um, countersinking. Uh, that's not the right term. You guys, let me know what the proper woodworking terms are for this. Um, mortised, maybe? I mortised the hinges. Um, this is actually my first woodworking project I've ever done. I've always been a carpenter. Um, but I never had the chance to actually 
do woodworking. So this was really fun for me. Now this medicine cabinet, I actually um, got a lot of inspiration off of this uh, plan from thisoldhouse.com. And you can see the door, you know, the way this is planned out is that was gonna be, the door frame was gonna be pocket hole screwed, um, you know, to itself and then having a back panel overlaid on top of that and then the met the uh, mirror just glued onto the back panel with a molding. So that was my original plan. I was, I was basically copying this design. I ended up not really wanting to follow that exactly um, and I wanted to actually um, run a groove through the styles and rails that I could set the mirror into instead of having the mirror glued to the back panel and then having a molding around there. So I actually started doing that, but then realized that I just cut out all of the wood that the pocket hole screws were going to grab. So I ended up having to scrap that whole design and ended up with a complete tongue and groove design for the styles and rails which ended up working out really well. It just took a lot more time to kind of get everything um, cut out and measured and, you know, made so it was nice and precise. All right, so that's all I got done on that day. I decided to wrap it up and start again on a new day. Now, it was kind of chilly, so I started up my propane heater to get things warmed up a little bit. So if you hear a hissing noise in the background, that's what it is. All right, so since I had to completely redo my uh, door, I, I ended up accidentally cutting some boards that were, I ended up cutting the shelves and I had to recut new shelves because of that. Um, so back to the saw to create some new shelves since I had accidentally used the wood on the door and uh, just getting those in place. Now the other thing with the shelves is they had to be deeper because this was an inset door. And so now I'm just getting the door set in place within the frame and I'm using some shims to just get an equal space all the way around. And then I can mark where I had mortised the hinges on the sides of the box. That way I know where to chisel out uh, the hinges on the door itself. Anyways, I put the door on and went to close it and it didn't fit. So I ended up not really uh, mortising the hinge deep enough. So I ended up having to take my hand plane and trimming down um, the, the side of the door. Unfortunately, that made the styles uh, a little bit, you know, smaller on one side than the other, but you really can't notice it once, you know, everything's all done. Unless I point it out to you, you really can't uh, identify that they're different. And after I did that, the cabinet was pretty much done, so I was ready to paint. So after some additional sanding and uh, prep for paint, I hung the cabinet out on my, uh, I've got a runner set up for my dog that I just hung the cabinet from. And at first I used uh, spray paint in a can and it was terrible. It didn't work out well at all. Um, a lot of the green showed through. I would have had to buy like so many more cans of paint. So I ended up buying a Wagner sprayer, which I've never used one before and it worked out really well. I was really happy with it. And I was able to get this whole thing painted and finished off and basically all I needed to do is uh, install the the knob to open and close the door and I got the cabinet done. So I really hope you have enjoyed this uh, complete video series um, on how to go from idea to completion of a project using SketchUp Free. So if you have any questions about any of this whole process, definitely leave a comment below. I'll make sure 
to respond to it. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I know this video is a little bit different than what I typically do. It wasn't so much a SketchUp tutorial, but let me know if you like it. Because I, you know, I do all sorts of, you know, neat little projects. I actually have this project right here that I'm working on. Um, so this is a camera slider that I made. Um, a lot of it was open source. A lot of the design was open source, but I want it, I want to work on getting this motorized. So I designed this end piece here in SketchUp and it's not focusing. There you go. So I designed this end piece here uh, with the, the bearing and I have, and I designed this motor, it's catching my face. And I designed this motor mount as well. I was so excited. I got this thing designed and printed all in one shot. Like that never happens. I usually, you know, I'll print something out and something will be wrong. I will have missed something, but I got it, you know, printed out and it was like, perfect on the first shot. So um, let me know if you are interested in seeing, you know, a project like this, you know, I can kind of do a video just kind of showing like, you know, the design process and uh, show some of the 3D printing and, and stuff like that. But um, anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.